Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Anthony Explains, where I explain stuff. Well, in theory. <laughs> yeah, no, I explain stuff. That's what's happening. Uh, today, we're going to be explaining Python decorators, which is a bit of an intermediate or advanced topic. I probably get asked this question, I don't know, every other stream on Twitch, you know, Hey, Anthony, what was that funny thing with the at sign next to it? Um, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to explain this. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I'll probably not put it to rest because people will still ask the question, but at least I'll have something that I can point people at. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into that today. Explain some decorators. All right, so we're just going to start with Python file. Cool. So the syntax that uh, we're talking about is basically you have some sort of function. Let's just do... Uh, hello x, it's going to be our simple function here, and you have some decorator, which is the at sign followed by stuff after it. In, uh, well, well, we'll just start with a very simple decorator, which is just at sign and a name. Um, and we'll actually be building our own decorator here. So this is kind of the simplest decorator that you can start with. Return fuck. And we'll call this just to show that it works. Python 3 t.py. Cool. <clears throat> so, a decorator is really just syntax sugar. So it is this function here uh, with the at sign in front of it decorates this function. You can also decorate classes, but we won't get into class decorators because they're kind of complicated and honestly I don't, I don't use them very often. It's the same concept but applied to classes. Uh, but what this syntax does, it's a syntax sugar which basically defines this function and then passes that function into this function up here. So this, this code here is actually the same as doing def fx, actually just copy and paste this, and then f equals deck of f. So if we, we run this, we'll actually comment this out up here, so that we're only running the bottom code, and you'll see that this code still runs basically the same as before. Now this decorator isn't doing anything, this is the trivial decorator takes in the function and just immediately returns it back. Um, yeah, so this is this is kind of the syntax sugar there. <clears throat> but what a decorator allows you to do is it allows you to attach functionality before and after an inner function. Uh, so if we take our decorator up here, uh, this one is just returning back the original function. But we can actually return back a new function. I usually like to call this deck inner but it doesn't really matter what you call it. You can call it whatever you want. Quargs, quargs, return func. So this is kind of the, the next most trivial decorator. Uh, you'll see here that I'm taking in this function, but we're actually returning out a new function, this deck inner, and that will replace the implementation here. So you can see like we define this function, then we call deck with it, and we get back a new function. So we get back this, this new function here. Uh, we'll go back to the actual decorator syntax now that we've explained that. And you'll see this, this still works. We still pass this argument through. So what happens here is we pass this argument here. It becomes star args here. Then star args gets passed into func, and then that one gets uh, turned into x here, and then we print this value here. Now, if you're not familiar with star args and star star quargs, uh, this basically makes it so the function can take any number of positional arguments here and any number of named arguments here. And then, uh, so this is a, in the function signature, star is a collection of positional arguments and star star is a collection of named arguments. And then this is what I like to call a splat argument. So it turns, turns a sequence into positional arguments and this turns a mapping into named arguments. So it basically allows us to forward all arguments along. Now you can actually intercept them. So if we wanted to do print uh, got args and quargs, you can see now when we run this, uh, we received arguments as a tuple. So that's the sequence that we received as part of this. And we don't have any named arguments here. So it just prints out an empty mapping here. But this is actually kind of the, the first added behavior we've done as a side effect of a decorator. So we've, we've added the behavior that it prints something before it calls this function. Now, if we were to do this, it's, it's not quite a, it's not gonna work as we expect because we return and so this is, this is necessarily dead code. Now you can, of course, get around that by assigning this return value here and then returning afterwards. So you, you now have 
print before and print after. So that's, that's kind of our like basic decorator tutorial here. However, this is not quite the most correct decorator. Uh, and we'll actually show why. If we import T, <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's uh, take some learning from our first episode of this series and, you know, put, uh, put, put a proper, uh, actually, if we want to be completely correct, we'd make a main function and inside the main function, we would call this and then we do exit main, go like that. Um, and now if we import T, syntax error, <laughs> yep, double under equals, import T, T dot F of one, uh, yeah, so now when we call this function that works, so there is one problem with the way that I've set up this decorator, and that is that this function gets a weird name after the fact. Uh, you'll see that it's it should be called F because that was that's the name of this function, uh, but it's, it's actually called deck inner. Another thing that we lost as well is if we do uh, this is the doc string. We do this again. T dot f dot doc. We also lose our doc string. And we also lose our type annotation as well. If we import t t dot f dot annotations. Yeah, we we lost all of our annotations. Uh, and that's because we actually we replaced the full implementation of this function with a new function. Uh, but we can preserve this, and we're actually going to use another decorator to preserve this. So when this decorator is provided as part of the Python standard library, it lives in the func tools module. We'll do func tools dot and we'll pass func into it. Uh, this is actually a decorator factory, which we'll get into a second, or at least I call it a decorator factory. I don't know what the true name is for it, but that's the way I like to think of it. Um, it's a function that returns a decorator, which you thought this was a lot of nesting. We'll get to more nesting in a second. But if you wrap or if you decorate your replacement function with this, it will preserve some of the attributes on the function. So if we try this again, import t t dot f dot name. This, you'll see that it preserves f. We should also preserve doc. And actually, I didn't check this for the... Okay, cool. Yeah, it does. Uh, it also preserves annotations. I believe there's some other stuff that it preserves as well. Like, there's a signature? No? I don't know. <laughs> what other stuff does it preserve? Uh, the... Lots of double under things here. Oh, module, that would be the other one that it preserves, t.f.module. Now, in this case, the decorator and the function have the same module, so it doesn't actually make a difference, but uh, double under module will report to the same thing as well. Uh, and actually, it also sets this double underscore wrapped attribute, which gives you access to the original function without this decorator. Uh, kind of kind of a neat little way if you need to if you need to get access to this original function so you wouldn't be able to otherwise so that's what functools.wraps does uh, and the last little bit to this is a decorator factory and so let's see I'll just call it deck2 uh, let's say that we wanted to pass some sort of argument into this so that we can customize this let's say that uh, I don't know, we wanted to have like a greeting in our decorator. This is a very similar, silly, silly example. Uh, maybe a greeting and a, wait, what do you say when you go, when you say goodbye? A farewell, I guess. Yeah, a greeting and a farewell. And uh, so we'll do deck two. So this is the naming that I like to use, but it will, you know, the, the names of these inner functions don't really matter all that much. But we go pretty deep in here. Return deck to inner, return deck to decorator. And we'll take the same function that we had before. Uh, let's use hello and goodbye as our greeting and farewell. And so the, the idea behind this, this deck two here is to print something before, but a, a particular message. And so let's do print greeting, and then we'll call the function, ret equals func star arcs star star quarks, 
Uh, and then we'll print our farewell. And return ret. So we got this, we got this nice, you know, arrow shaped code there. Although I guess the arrow is the other way for you guys, right? No. <laughs> that way. There we go. <laughs> arrow shaped code. Uh, which, you know, sometimes is a small. Oh, we forgot our funk tools decorator. Funk tools dot reps funk. So you're always wrapping the original function here. Now, this one, so we thought the like bouncing back and forth was a lot on the first decorator example. This one is a little bit further. So the first thing that happens here is when we import this module, deck two gets called. So that's this expression here that I have highlighted and that passes hello and goodbye in here. And so what that does is it calls this function, this outer function, and we return this inner function here. And so that becomes the new decorator function. And then that gets called based on this at symbol here and passes in this function as func. So you'll, you'll notice that this chunk right here is basically the same as our original decorator up here. Just it's a, it's a little bit different here. Uh, I'm just indented and <laughs> part of this here. Uh, but now we have this greeting and farewell that we can use as variables inside of our inner decorator. So we can you know, print print our greeting and farewell, uh, similar to how we did here, although we hard-coded the strings here. Now we can use them as variables from our original decorator here. And if we run this, uh, <laughs> we run this and I don't typo, <laughs> solid credding there, uh, you can see that it prints our, prints our greeting, then runs this code in here, and then prints goodbye. Now this is a, a little bit tricky to see, so I usually like to explain this by using the debugger to kind of step through so you, you really see what's going on here. Uh, pip install future breakpoint, oh wait, don't have virtual enough. Oh, we'll just use Python 3.7. So breakpoint is a new built-in in Python 3.7. Uh, I've actually built a package called future breakpoint, which allows you to install that in older versions of Python, but if we just use a new enough version of Python, it's not a big deal. Uh, but the nice thing about this breakpoint statement is it gives you a debugger. I won't go into the debugger here, but I'll probably do another video that explains how to use the basics of the debugger, because I think it's I think it's one of the most important skills of working in Python is, you know, know how a debugger works and be able to use that. Let's see, if we step into this, oops, meant to be over here, you can see we're calling deck two. We can look at some variables here. So we have greeting and farewell. Uh, but this is just defining that deck2 function and then returning it. Uh, returns that function. We define f2. Or sorry, we define f, which then calls deck2 decorator. So you can see func here is that function. And we call wraps. And then we return deck2 inner. This is our replacement function that we have here. And then that, that finishes... Uh, the declaration of this this function here. I'm actually just going to quit so that we can jump to the execution Go a little a little quicker here uh, to see how this thing executes. So we're going to step into the call of f1, which steps into our deck2 inner here, and we're about to print our greeting. Then we're going to run our function, and we're going to print the farewell. If we do s. You can see that it printed our greeting. If we step in. We're now inside of F, um, so we'll, we'll print hello X. Let's see, hello one happens there. And then we pop back out into deck two, so we're now here. We print farewell, uh, which is our, our goodbye message, and that, that concludes our, our execution. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the basics of how a decorator works. In Python, you'll see two common decorators out of the box. Wait, two? Three, three common decorators out of the box. <laughs> and these are, well, other than functools.wraps. Uh, the three decorators you'll see out of the box that are helpful are ones that are used for building a class. So let's just make a simple class here. X equals X. So the first one is property. I get asked this one a lot. Plus five. Just a little print message to see something here. So what property does is it turns a zero argument method into what looks like an attribute. Uh, so if we 
Python 3-i t.py. Oh. Still a breakpoint in here. Breakpoint. Uh. <laughs> oh. Import t, there we go. Uh, if we make a c class, t.c. Oops, c equals t.c. That's an argument in there. I'm, of course, not perfect. Uh, you'll see we can access x as an attribute as normal, but we can also access y as an attribute. Dang it. <laughs> what do you mean x is not defined? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I just typed it here. We're good. Uh, and you can see that it printed this in property y, and then we got the value of y there. So it, it allows you to basically have a computed function that looks like an attribute. Now you can use this to change your interface of your function or of your class so it kind of looks like it has attributes, uh, but they're actually functions that do computation. Um, but kind of kind of fun there. Uh, the other types of decorators that you'll see here, and maybe we'll go more into like properties some other day, uh, but I, I have opinions about it. Um, so the other one that you'll see commonly is class method. And it'll do something like this. In class, you'll s. Uh, now what class method does is it means that when you call this function, which you can call in two different ways, I'll show that in a second, uh, for t, uh, you can call it in two different ways. One is from the class itself, so we just accessed it as an attribute on c, uh, but you can also access it on an instance of the class. If we construct a c and we call a func, you'll see that it consistently makes this CLS variable, which is the conventional name for the first argument of the class method, uh, it makes that point at the type of uh, the class that this is, is called from. You'll see that, that that always points to the class t.c. Now, accordingly, there's also static method, which instead of, uh, Instead of passing the class magically, it will pass no arguments magically. So this this kind of acts as just like a normal function. Normal function. I probably should have written these all out instead of having to continually import t.c.fun. Uh, but again, you can call this in the same way. Like you can call it on the class or you can call it on the instance. And those are kind of the, the three built-in decorators that you'll see pretty often. Anyway, this has been a, a short explanation of decorators and what I call decorator factories, as well as some of our built-in decorators. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have other questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can show up on my Twitch streams and ask questions there. Uh, there should hopefully be a playlist by the time this video goes up of some of these other videos that I've done to explain stuff. So you can check that out in the description. Um, or if you want to see what these are all about, the first video in the playlist will have a, a little explainer there. <laughs> kind of a Anthony explains, Anthony explains. <sighs> a little silly, but it happens. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around in the future.